What up, what up, everybody? It's the Built Different Podcast. Today, we want to talk about some of the lessons we've learned, some of the, the past failures. Uh, you know, what do we learn from them and how do we kind of move forward? Uh, so, Sean's going to be asking some questions. We're going to be having like a little bit of a conversation, but um, I'll give Sean the floor at this time. Yeah. So, um, obviously, failure is never really a, a good word to hear, but I think one of the things that I've always been taught and I've always tried to do in my personal life is, you know, to turn failures into lessons. So I guess starting off with the the easiest question is um, what is, you know, a failure, Ricky, that kind of, or a failure or something that didn't work, you know, how you had planned it that, uh, that really sticks with you. Something that like, you know, you're kind of like, that has always been there. Um, that comes to your head. I think majority of the time things are never going to go the way you want them to go. Uh, that's number one. And then I think you said something good there as well. It's like not so much a failure; it's just a lesson. I think it's a failure if you don't grow from it, if you don't learn from it, if you don't walk away better from uh, the situation or the the situation or wh- whatever you know downfall you may have had. So. Uh, as far as like big ones for me, I would probably say they're more personal, like on my side of, of the fence being, you know, not, uh, you know, not moving as quickly as I should, uh, you know, kind of doubting. Uh, I think early on when I first started this, there was a lot more self doubt, a lot more, who am I to, to do this? Like why, you know? Why, you know, why, why am I the guy to accomplish this? Why am I the person to do this? Obviously, before everybody kind of came on, because uh, now I, you know, can lean on you. You guys can lean on me type of thing. But, uh, yeah, I think a lot of it resided in myself. And I think that's the biggest key to anything is self-belief. And, you know, you have the vision, just pursuing it and not doubting yourself, not doubting your abilities, not doubting uh, what you bring to the table. And for myself, yeah, that I, I did a lot of that early on. Uh, I think, you know, getting things moving quicker, uh, you know, even patents and things like that. It, You know, I, I think, you know, it's a learning process for anybody that's done this, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I think a lot of it is probably like self-induced uh, errors and self-induced, uh, you know, pain that I caused myself that I probably could have uh, avoided by just going for it. And, you know, I'm more in that mindset now, more in that, uh, and that's more, you know, embedded in me now to just go for it a little bit more. It's still, so you know, still a process at the end of the day. And then, you know, you get better at it over time with more wins. But yeah, I would say that's probably the, the uh, that's, you know, that's probably the failures I look at. And, you know, as far as failures, as far as the company as a whole, I mean, there's, you know, there's quite a few. I'm sure we'll go to that. We had a we we discussed this a, a little while ago. Some of the things that we would like to change, you know. Yeah, but yeah, going back to what you said, you know, confidence. Obviously, not only in you know business or being a leader, but just confidence in life. I think is something that is very important. You know, we, you know hear it all the time, whether it's, you know, business leaders are supposed to be confident or, you know, even as, you know, in a relationship, you're, you know, confidence is considered attractive. It's considered, you know, something that uh, people look for. So um, that's definitely something that you're not alone in in struggling with. You know, I, I think everyone at some point has a confidence issue. And if you don't, then you might be on the wrong side of it where you're a little too confident in yourself. So um, I think it's, it's typically, I guess, considered, or at least in your case, from the business side, considered kind of an imposter syndrome. Um, so do you want to explain a little bit about, you know, uh, I think we may have talked about imposter syndrome before, but um, yeah, you know, explain a little bit to our viewers about, you know, what is imposter syndrome and, Maybe any experience that you have with it, how you kind of moved forward from it and got to a level where you felt better. Yeah, imposter syndrome is, you know, it's prevalent in business, especially like you're a startup. You know, you have 
serial entrepreneurs, you have people that maybe worked in a space for a long time. So there's, you know, less of an imposter syndrome. I think everybody goes, goes through it. You hear like some of the most successful uh, people in, in business and technology and finance, you know, say that they've gone through it before. It's essentially like, you know, you feel like you're, you're going through the motions and you're not really supposed to be doing what you're doing. You're not that guy. You're not that girl. You know what I mean? You're not the person that's, uh, you're not, you're portraying, you're basically acting, you're acting out, uh, uh, you know, being somebody who uh, you really aren't. And so, you know, in business, it happens all the time. For me, it was from the perspective of like, I'm not, I don't have a tech background, you know what I mean? I'm not, I say it all the time. I know it's kind of like beating a, a dead horse now. I'm not the person that went to, because there's so many schools now and, and you see it all the time. And I, I'm always looking at investments. It's, you know, this person graduated from uh, Harvard Business School or MIT or, you know, they there's um, schools that are built for, you know, you go in there and it's almost like a, an accelerator where you build a business and then you take, can take that out into the real world and make it happen. And you're surrounded by all of these amazing people that are your teachers, your mentors that have been there and done that, that kind of groom you to uh, business and business success. So I was never that person. And then two, even, you know, when I was in my own accelerator, I felt like an imposter there because, you know, there was a lot of technical people, but, you know, it's, it's a, it's a self-confidence thing. It, it comes over time with just, uh, you know, sharing the vision that you have for the company. Um, you start bringing people on board like yourself, like, you know, all the other team members, you know, Tao, Alex, you know, Justin Bubanesh, you know, um, Dan, uh, Matt, Matthew, uh, you know, uh, Gino, it's, you start bringing these people in and then you start, you know, I think you, you pick up mentorship and you get, uh, you gain, start gaining knowledge, you start reading more, you start educating yourself more. And, you know, you're, you're never going to be confident about anything unless you, unless you, unless you feel comfortable with it. You know I mean? You're never going to be a hundred percent comfortable with it, but you should ingratiate yourself enough in, in that world via learning, via reading, listening to things. Uh, being mentored, you know, surrounding yourself with people uh, smarter than yourself in the areas that you, you lack knowledge in. And uh, when you do that, that's where when the imposter syndrome starts to kind of die down a little bit and you start to you start to become more comfortable. And, you know, just pitching has gotten me more comfortable and made me feel confident. And then just belief in what we're doing, because like, I don't know, I just even last night I'm, I'm sitting there like a, a lot of times I just listen to music and I visualize and I'm like, what we're doing is really some really cool shit. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's game changer. And so my mind, I always kind of stick with that and I always stick with the visual of what this thing can become, how many people can help, um, you know, what we become through this process. Once I start visualizing that and seeing that, that's where I'm like more confident. Like, yeah, this, this, I got this. This is, you know, something I dreamed of, something I dream of every night, every day. And, you know, I also think of like the team we have around us that gives me confidence as well. So, I, you know, all of these things eliminate that kind of imposter syndrome where you're kind of like, I don't know, you know, you know I don't know if I'm that guy or I don't know if this company's in, you know, this other person's doing that, like that goes away when that visual's there, the people are behind you and you know how powerful this thing is and how powerful you are as well, because we, you know, there's something inside of each of us. It's just a matter of bringing that out and, and, not, you know, letting your light shine, essentially, and not letting anybody or anything put a, a, a damper over it, you know what I mean? And and that's, uh you know, that's how you start eliminating that uh, imposter syndrome and confidence issues and things like that. Yeah, and I mean, I wanted to circle back. I know earlier in that, in that conversation, you talked about, uh, you know, like, not going to Harvard and, and things like that. I, I I think that's something that I wanted to address for some of our younger viewers is that, you know, going to one of these big schools or like, you know, like highly reputable schools isn't always, mm -hmm. you know, like, like that doesn't always translate to success. And at the same time, going to a, a less known or less highly regarded school doesn't translate to being a less person. You know, I think you, you see it all the time in, in sports and, and things like that, you know, 
you have players that get recruited to go play for Alabama football, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that they're now immediately going to be NFL players. You know, there's players that go to the smaller schools that still end up being successful. So it's kind of one of those things where I think, you know, being in one of those schools, being in that environment and being surrounded by, you know, very smart people can motivate you to to push yourself to be one of those like to be even smarter and you know potentially you know do some groundbreaking stuff but at the end of the day it's going to come back to well what are you doing how hard are you working you know because you might end up being the person that's in charge and hiring all these people from harvard because you're you know you worked harder you got to the right spot in your career and built a company like like we're doing now um yeah. Uh, so I think that's something that I just wanted people to know. It's like, you know, just because someone's going to Harvard and you're going to another school doesn't mean that they're necessarily a lot to be, you know, a better fit or a better um, leader or smarter than you at any given thing. Yeah, 100 percent. And yeah, it's I mean, that's a good lesson to learn because so many people right off the bat and this imposter syndrome again, it's like, well, I didn't do this or I didn't build, you know, I didn't build it in my garage and I wasn't selling lemonade. You know, these typical, you know, I think every with everything in life, there's this the, these these uh, portraits that are painted of, of people and you get, you know, put into these boxes like you're an entrepreneur. You're supposed to have, you know, like there's all these stories of, oh, I was I was mowing lawns, at, at, you know, and making fifty dollars a week and then I was selling lemonade when I was two years old and you know I you know I built a company my first company when I was 10 I was you know trading video games and getting you know those those stories are cool and those are a lot of the you know that that is how a lot of people's entrepreneurial journey starts but there's just you know there's a lot of people and this is what sucks about it too is like there's so many people out there with dreams and ideas but they never embark on them because they're like, I didn't take this path or I didn't start this way. Or, I didn't, I didn't go to school for this. or I didn't, you know, I didn't get into the, you know, Stanford business school or, you know, it, it's, that's not what it's about. It's about you having the dream and then you, you know, the vision and then surrounding yourself with people, um, you know, people that are smarter than yourself. You should always have like mentors. You should always have, you know, you have gain your knowledge as well. You never stop learning. Um, but you have people around you that are that are smarter than you. I mean, this bottom line, every you know, you can't be that smartest guy in the room uh, all the time. You know, what I mean, there's always got to be people that are smarter than you because you got to grow, you got to learn, you got to, you know, you're not going to learn by being the smartest person in the room, and you're not going to have a, a, a company that's successful when you're the smartest person and everybody else is is uh, not as smart as you or bright as you. You know, it's just not going to work out and. One other thing I'll say about entrepreneurship, too, because it's, it's kind of something that annoys me. And like, I think everybody's journey is different, obviously. But I, I think entrepreneurship and business, being a business owner, things like that have taken a is the context of it's gotten a little weird. Now it's become almost like a, uh, you know, when you go to college and you're like, OK, I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to become a lawyer. I'm going to, you know, architect, whatever. Now people are saying, oh, I'm going to I'm going to, you know own a business. And so a lot of people go into this, this process, not even knowing what, you know, not even knowing what they're going to do or what they're going to build. I'm just going to own a business and I'm going to be successful. But a lot of times it has to be something that you're either you're passionate about a pain point that you see, uh, something that you want to help, you know, something that you believe is going to change the world. You know, there has to be something you can't just go into it. Cause I'm seeing so many things now where, you know, younger people are going to these events and like, yeah, I just came to this event to, cause I want to start a business. I don't know what yet, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, not to, to trounce on anybody's, what anybody wants to do or what, but it, you see it so much now where it's just like a, it's a thing to be an entrepreneur. It's a thing to be a business owner. It's a thing to start a company. And, you know, when I think when a lot of times when people approach it that way, that's where they, tend to give up or they tend to let go because it's not really it's not really in them to do it like it has to you know because this this is hard like it's not easy it's it's a grind it's very uh it's it, it, you know it's very uh debilitating at times you know what i mean so if you're going into this you have to 
it has to be something that you're a hundred percent in. You there's no dipping your toe in the water. You have to be all in because if not, you've wasted your time. And so those people that just say, I want to be entre entrepreneur and business person for the sake of being a business person or entrepreneur, like, cause you think it's going to make you a lot of money. It's like, don't do that, please. It's like, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you brought up a very good point there. And, um, you know, I, uh, I think the one benefit of, of that newer mindset is that it's becoming more socially acceptable for people to follow their dreams, right? So in the past, if you went home to your parents and said, mom, dad, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, they'd be like, yeah. get a real job, you know, like stop living on my couch, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, now it's, you know, starting a business is a very viable career. True. But mm -hmm. I, I do also completely agree with what you're saying, which is you can't just, plan for your job to be becoming a business leader you know like right out of college you can't just be like oh yeah like out of college like i'm just going to become a ceo of a company that i have no idea what i'm doing like you know it's like you can either there's a couple paths to becoming a business leader you can work up within a business which is a very common path it's very viable mm -hmm. um or you can start your own business or be part of a startup um, which is another very viable career, but at this, at both of those, or specifically with starting a business, you need to have a reason to start a business. You can't just yeah. start one because you want to be a business leader. You have to start one because you have this dream or this vision, or at the very least, you're solving a problem. That's what they basically say with any business is, mm -hmm. what problem are you solving, right? Because if you're not solving a problem, then you probably don't have customers. Yeah, it's not really going to work out for you very well because um, then nobody needs what you're doing. So, um, yeah, I think as long as you have one of those three things, either the vision, the, the problem, at the very least the problem, um, then, yes, a, a business, becoming a business leader, a CEO, COO, uh, anyone near the top of a business is a very viable option. Um, mm -hmm. but it, there just needs to be that, you know, that passion and that, that plan for how you're going to get there. You can't just go into it by saying, oh, I really just want to be an entrepreneur. Like, that's not how that works. Yeah. And a lot of learning on the job too. It's like, yeah, you know, not everyone's built to be an entrepreneur. I mean, mm -hmm. we, you know, we've seen it, um, with, you know, some people it, you really have to be a self-starter if you want to be an entrepreneur and there's, there's some people that they like the idea of being an entrepreneur, but when it comes down to it, they're not at, they're not willing to put in the extra time, the extra motivation to, to get what needs to get done and to, to make enough progress to, to push forward. And that's why there's a good amount of startup companies that don't end up making it, you know? Yeah. There has to be a level and you know, not the smartest, not the, you know, the greatest business acumen, but the one thing I have is relentlessness. I never, you know, I never give up on things and then self-belief. Like, you know, I know I can get this done. I know I can make this happen. I know I can uh, build this business. I know, you know, I think that's what's carried me through. Um, you know, the tough times, like it's just, the vision is still there and I know the potential behind this. And I think the more and more you hear about from the mouth of others, the the how big the potential of this is, uh, it just makes it, it, you know, there's no quit. There's no end. There's no, you know, giving up. Um, this is going to happen. You know, it's, we just got to push and make it happen. And, you know, that, that's what this is for. And this is what it is for most, most people, unless you're thrown, you know, you know, there's some nepotism or somebody's throwing you cash just to do something, you know, then typically that will, you know, that may not survive unless you're passionate about it. You have all those three things that we talked about, but yeah. Um, so yeah, then jumping back into, you know, the point of this, the past failures, biggest lessons, um, was there any failures or lessons that you really felt like you learned in the accelerator program? I know you mentioned it earlier and, you know, like, um, you know, your experience with that, was there anything from that, that you, that sticks out to you that like, you're like, man, you know, if I did that now, I could have done something different, you know? 
From the accelerator? I, I don't... Honestly, I don't think I can take anything from that and say necessarily it was a failure that I would change because I think everything at that level, like kind of ground level, was a learning experience that like, you know, you know, maybe you get some cuts on your back, but it becomes that that hard and callous, you know what I mean? It's like everything at that level was something, something kind of learned. I think one of my first lessons kind of came in not in the accelerator itself, but through the accelerator was like networking and meeting people. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, you, you, when you start at when you start that, when you're that early, it's hard to identify people that will be meaningful to the company, people that can help push the company forward. So at that stage, I'm just like, Oh, somebody said they kind of want to work with me. Oh, cool. You know, this guy can do this or this girl can do that. Like, cool. It's just like, yay, I have help. You know what I mean? Finally, somebody's gonna stick by my side. Cause remember like in that accelerator, I think every company had at least one person. I was the one kind of solo founder. Um, but yeah, then I started finding networking people, but they weren't the right people. You know what I mean? We talk, we talk about the dumbass flux capacitor guy, um, that idiot, you know, <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got connected with him, but, you know, I was kind of like, you know, at that time, like, wow, this guy's done this, he's worked, done that, he's, you know, you know, and the guy's selling me this dream and stuff like that, and I'm like, wow, this guy's the real deal, and he wasn't shit, you know, um, you know, that, that could have been a very uh, expensive lesson had I, you know, said, hey, here's part of the company, I want you to do what you, you can do, you know what I mean, what you say you can do. Um, and I had a couple of things like that happen. So it's like, you know, not, you know, I think out of that, that, uh, accelerator, I think it could have been a big, huge failure had I brought these people in, but, you know, thankfully these people went by the wayside. Um, they walked away and, you know, most of the time through ghosting, which was another lesson I learned. And we talk about all the time, how stupid ghosting is in business. How you look like a complete fool and complete idiot and ghosting somebody as a in business in life is just stupid in general and business is just a complete no no. Um, but yeah, that that happened and so that was kind of I think one of the bigger lessons I learned is and I mean thank God it led to the people we have now who are in my well not even in my opinion on paper on everything are way more talented, way more you know way more. Uh, fit way more with the mindset I was uh, that the company needed which was people that had had shared the vision people that you know didn't limit themselves I mean you know the flex capacitor guy with the you know these stupid products he's making all the, the guy was a smart guy like he had intellect but he just no vision or no you know he kept he had so much talent to do something if I had his talent I probably would have been able to build this thing in my garage, like, you know, the stereotypical uh, entrepreneurs do, but he can even do that. This guy was building the most nonsensical things. His, his goal was money, like quick money, um, you know, which, you know, that, that's fine and dandy, but, you know, I wanted go-getters. I wanted people that had, you know, dreamt big and built big, you know what I mean? And, you know, thankfully that led us to Georgia Tech and, and Dr. Yao working with him and, you know, Tao, Alex on the technical side, Vanessa B, you know, Justin. Um, and then like just all the other talent that we're bringing in now, it's like, thank God, that was a very, very valuable lesson. So it wasn't necessarily a failure. It could have been a bad one, but it ended up being a blessing. Thank God. Yeah. And then, you know, moving forward to once you got, you know, started the company and got it off the ground, are there any, um, failures that you can think of i i can think of one personally i know i know what you think <laughs> yeah you probably know which one i'm thinking of but any failures besides that one or we could talk about that one if if you want to i think as you go along and then you start like because every level like i said unless you're serial and you've done this before is you're gonna kind you're gonna and i hate to use the word failures like it's just always lessons um you know you 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 learn from a small mistake and, you know, you, you, not a, you, you try not to make the big mistake that takes you down completely, but 
you know, there's, there's small little mistakes that you learn from and you grow from. Like I said, it's like little stab wounds and it becomes a scar and you become hardened, you know what I mean? And you become, you become more vigilant, you become more, uh, you become hardened from, you know, whatever happened. So me, it's like <clears throat> being too dependent on people, you know what I mean? Um, I think we're talking about the same thing here, right? Oh, I was, oh, I was yeah, thinking yeah. of a different one. Okay. Uh, yeah, being dependent on people, putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, <clears throat> you can never do that, you know, especially in the in the funding realm. Like, you know, a lot of people are going to make promises to you, but you know, you take it take everything with a grain of salt. That's that's number one, uh, because you know you see a tendency of people to not live up to promises a lot. You know what I mean? And so that that was, I think that was a hard lesson over the past two years is take everything with a grain of salt and and never never take a promise as, as something that somebody's gonna one hundred percent certainly do. Um, on, and the main thing about the promises though. If you if you somebody does make you that promise, get get it on paper. Get it on paper, not like a napkin. Well, a napkin can suffice, but you know, you probably don't want to do that. You want to go to your attorney and have your attorney draft paperwork and solidify things and hold people. That's that's the best way to hold people to their word is to have it in writing through your attorney, through a lawyer, legally binding. Um, so that was a little bit of a lesson is and you know. Had a little bit of stall, it stalled a little bit, some efforts, but I think in the end we came out better for it. Because um, every time, you know, that's the thing about every time you fail too is like, or like something, you had hit a roadblock, you know, you you can add like another kind of notch in your belt of getting over another hurdle, you know what I mean? Like, because it forces you to adapt, it first forces you to figure things out, it forces you to find a way to get it done. and. You feel you just ultimately feel better, you know. What I mean, it feels good to have the funds in your pocket, but um, it feels good to to get past a hurdle and figure out a way to get it done. And that that's like more of the resiliency. You get more and more resilient, become you know, as I tell myself, unstoppable. Um, because you know that roadblock didn't stop you. Then you run up against the next one. You're like, okay, I got over that one. I can get over this one. So definitely um, trust no one. <laughs> Trust no one, and in your internal team maybe, but trust on the outside. Trust no one, and and you know never take anybody's word. Don't do a handshake deal. Get it on paper, and uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Just you gotta you gotta put golden eggs in multiple baskets all over the place, and yeah, just never never stop. You'll never stop doing that in, in business. Essentially, I I remember having a teacher at UCF who. Uh, or a professor, and, and he had the same motto was trust nobody. Like, <laughs> it was like, we'd like, like, we'd go to him, we'd be like, hey, like, I have to miss class because of this or whatever. And he's like, I don't trust you. I don't trust anybody. And like, <laughs> like, I think at one point he even said he didn't trust his wife. I'm like, I feel like you should definitely trust your wife, but I mean, maybe not. That's fine. <laughs> like, that was his, that was his motto, though, was like, I'm not going to trust this? him. This is a, one of my statistics classes, uh, time series data or something like that. But hopefully, he trusted numbers at least. <laughs> yeah, I guess he he probably trusted numbers, but eh, like as far as people, no, it was strictly don't like he's not going to trust you. So it, it was funny when you said that. I was like, we'd always get a good laugh, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean the the failures or failure slash you know lesson that I was thinking of was that one. Uh, Time, I want to say it was a year and a half ago with we didn't hit we didn't do what we were supposed to do for us. someone was asking something from us and we apparently didn't do it correctly enough oh, you talking, talking about that time Gino chewed our asses <laughs> yeah that is what I'm talking about yeah that was that was a kick in the ass man like because like we said we have mentors that we uh, respect a lot and that have been been where we want to go and done the things we want to do and and you know are bringing so much to the table for us and, and you know net from a network standpoint from a um you know life le even just life lessons as men um and business of course but yeah we i think we had just 
we had just started working with Gino a little bit, and he's Gino's on the sales side, an amazing sales guy, but and business leader. He's done pretty much. I mean, name it, he's done it. But yeah, we. <laughs> I think that's the first time we got chewed out. It felt like we were we went to the principal's office, um, and it felt like a more than anything, it felt like a, a, a you know, disappointed uncle or you know, disappointed family member or something, or, you know, disappointed dad. But yeah, that was a, a lesson, like have your stuff together, man. Cause especially when you're approaching people like that don't have all the time in the world to, you know, they have so many things going on. They're successful in so many things. They're running multiple businesses. Um, You go to them, you know, make sure you have your stuff together. Don't half-ass anything. And I think from that point on, after he chewed us out, and it wasn't even bad, like he cursed us out or anything, but, you know, was that dis like, it's easier sometimes to take a, a ass kicking than a, you know, I'm disappointed in you, disappointed in you just feel, hurts more, you know? And yeah, we took that, we took that to heart. And I think from that point on, we had our stuff straight every time we've presented something, every time somebody's asked us for something. And then it, from that point on, it was like, I wouldn't say smooth sailing, but I think every time somebody would ask us for something, we would have it and we would we would make sure we were on point, you know? I think at the very least, it elevated our standards of what we were willing to present to somebody. So, like, we now knew, hey, like, this isn't ready to show somebody, you know? Like, this has got to be better, you know? Like, at the same time, you don't want to wait till something's perfect because things are never going to be perfect. But... Mm -hmm. You had to have, like, it increased our standard of, hey, like, we can't, you know, do this until we get this done. And, you know, if we have to work all weekend to get this done, to get it to where it needs to be, then that's what you got to do. You know, it kind of motiv motivated us in a sense of, you know, wishing better for ourselves and wishing better for, you know, anyone who's vouching for us, too. You don't want to make them look bad. So you got to, you got to always, you know think not not only just about like oh what's the bare minimum that we can do but what is going to what can we do that will make us you know look appealing make us look you know even better than what someone might come in thinking you know that that's kind of where my mindset shifted um yeah that call was it wasn't even yeah like you said it wasn't like you know we got like torn apart but it was it was definitely the first time that someone had said like do better right and I think from them that point on, we did better. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you're 100 percent right, and it's you know we were better for it. You know what I mean? It was like we were better for it, and we're better today because of it. So yeah, it wasn't fun at the time, and but now it's funny to look back on, and we can laugh now. I don't even fully remember what it was that we were supposed to have had done, but. Either way, it was, whatever it is, we did it now. It was, but. It was a pricing thing. It was like, uh, you remember, it was like a financial, like a projection type of thing. And we like what we were putting, you know, putting costs into a potential uh, price, cost of goods sold. And um, we had to do like, mar put uh, like create margin, the profit margin and stuff like that. And it was like not done correctly. Gotcha. Well, it's done much better now in case. Anyone wants to wants it's an to know? Or... Too. Yeah, it's an ongoing process. You're always going to be messing with those things. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, any other thoughts? Any other you know failures or lessons that you wanted to share with with the people? Yeah, I I think one of the biggest things too is is and this was me you know starting off with like freaking uh you know like the imposter syndrome and confidence but never be afraid to approach people either like you know what i mean the worst they can do is say no you know like nobody's ever gonna beat you up or you know beat you down for asking for help asking for their time reaching out asking for their expertise if they say no and they're like you know kind of an ass about it then just walk away you know what i mean i think too is like going into to rooms and spaces, even if you're not that guy or girl yet, you haven't 
you haven't had success yet. You haven't had any sales yet. You haven't had like crazy traction or anything yet. You know, you walk into a room just having that confidence that you're, you're I'm not saying you're on the same level as everybody in the room, but have the confidence that you belong in that room, that you can be a part of this group, that you can be, you know, you belong in these conversations with people. Um, Cause that's, that's part of networking That's part of getting your name out there. And then, you know, that's how people get to know you through your confidence, through your words, through, you know, sharing your, what you're building, what your vision is, as opposed to like just keeping it to yourself. Um, that's something that I really want to kind of get away from as well in the coming year. And I know we'll probably do an episode of what we want to do for 2024, but, you know, sharing more of what we're doing, like get a little bit more out of stealth mode. And uh, for so long, I held it close to my vest and, you know, behind NDAs, we have patents now, but like keeping things really, really tight to the vest and not trusting somebody's going to take this and run away with it. Like, no, like what we've came to find out and what I came to find out early is like most people are so deeply involved in what they're doing. They don't have time <laughs> to really steal your idea. You know, I mean, you obviously don't want to go directly to your competitor, to somebody that's a competitor and say, hey, I want to talk to you. But, you know, people in and around technology, the, you know, most of the time universities, you, you, these people aren't going to steal your idea. They don't have the time to do it. You know, people want to be resources. People want to help majority of the time. So don't be afraid to do that. And don't be afraid to be in these rooms with people that you look up to and people that uh, are where you want to be and um, have done the things you want to do. Um, just have at it, go at it and, you know, with self-belief and and pursue it relentlessly and you know get in those rooms and, and be that mover and shaker and and go get it that uh, you see other people as so i think that's kind of the biggest lesson the, a big lesson as well is yeah don't don't um sell yourself short at all awesome yeah i i think that's a great way to to end it mm -hmm. i agree i agree and yeah thank you also for Great questions as always, and and always thank you on these with all your hard work and everything. And yeah, it's uh, these are always fun for me, um, and hopefully it's educational to someone uh, trying to pursue, uh, you know, a business or being an entrepreneur or something, you know. And it's only going to get better over time because I'm learning more and growing more, getting stronger, becoming more resilient, more unstoppable. So. Um, I think once I've, I'm fully, like, my confidence is unshaken, then then I can really say I'll be unstoppable. Because I'm relentless, but then you have the confidence to back it up. You're unstoppable, you know what I mean? And that's what I'm aiming to be, and that's what we're building the company as. I, um, yeah. Yeah, do you want to, uh, or I can do the send-off. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for watching. Uh, you know, if you haven't watched any of our previous episodes, please do. There's, you know, lots of great content in there. This podcast is everything from, you know, personal life to company related to tech to sports. Um, you know, we kind of jump around and uh, we have a lot of good insights. We have guests sometimes. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really good time. So uh, check it out. And yeah, thank you for liking us the episode thank you for subscribing if you're a subscriber and yeah we hope to we hope that you watch more episodes in the future for sure so everybody have a great weekend um be blessed uh happy holidays as well for everybody and yeah like comment subscribe like sean said and and uh just follow our journey this is, podcast is gonna get better as we go along uh, gonna keep learning keep growing together and uh, same thing with our technology. It's going to keep growing and getting stronger and better, as, as you'll see when we do our reveal and leave stealth mode. So with that being said, um, peace out and uh, everybody be safe out there over the holidays.